Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today we are going to start another mixed media project and it's going to be a spooky cemetery scene inside of a cloche or dome if we're not being fancy. And what we're going to work on today is creating a spooky tree to go in our scene made out of an empty pill bottle, some wire, some duct tape, and paper mache. Let's get crafting! Okay, so we've got another mixed media project today and I picked this up at Target. I don't know how many years ago and it's a little cloche with a little bit top. Um, planning on doing something with it and it's just been sitting and so I'm finally now going to work on creating a little scene to go in here. And I've got a bunch of different stuff. I am gonna use a piece of styrofoam as the base to build on. Um, because you can squish things into it to keep them upright. Um, but the styrofoam circle I bought is a little too big, so I'm going to have to trim that down. I've also got some Tim Holtz ideology pieces, and I think all of these are from last year, which was 2022. Although these might be this year's gate, I don't remember. Um, so... The exact items that I'm using may not be available, although you might be able to find them somewhere, but there are similar items that came out this year in the 2023 release. Um, so I just figured I bought all this stuff last year planning on doing this and then never got around to doing it. So I'm gonna use the stuff I already bought. Um, I've also pulled out some toothpicks because I figured I've got the gates and if I wanna create like a fence, I'm gonna use the toothpicks for creating the fence. I had set aside the inner tube from a roll of tin foil to use because I wanna put a tree in the scene um, and it has gone walkabout. I have no idea where it went. I cannot find it anywhere. As soon as I finish making this project, I will find it <laughs> because that's how those kinds of things work. Um, so I was looking around my house for something I could use because I want something firm to stand up to as as the base for building my tree on. And so I grabbed a prescription bottle and I'm going to use, I drilled a hole in the bottom and I'm going to use a bamboo skewer through it so that I can anchor it into the styrofoam. Um, and I'm going to do paper mache on top and we're going to add some wire to this to create some branches. Um, so... That's the plan right now. There are some other things I have in mind that I'm gonna do and we will get to as we go along. So to start with, we need to, to trim down our styrofoam. And I'm also then gonna put a coat of black paint on it. So I'm gonna start by taking my dome and pushing it in to the styrofoam so I can see where we need to cut off and it does not wanna squish in. Um, so a tip for cutting styrofoam, you are better off using a serrated blade uh, than just a regular knife. I pick this up and I use it as for cutting down boxes because it also works great for cutting down cardboard. So I highly recommend going to your dollar store and getting a serrated bread knife. And that's the, you know, if you don't know what a serrated knife is, it's the one that has essentially the scallopy blade <laughs> um, because it's a great tool just to have for your everyday life, but also for crafting. So I am going to, I need to like, kind of got a line going. So I'm gonna go in and trim this down. I'm also going to cut it in half once I trim it down because it's, this is too thick and the dome's not very high, so it's cutting into my space for um, creating the piece. But I don't know that you need to see me um, cutting the styrofoam. And the sound it makes is kind of annoying and it's gonna make a ridiculous mess. 
because if you've ever worked with styrofoam, it, it gets everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be back. Okay, so I've trimmed down our styrofoam and I've put a coat of black gesso on it and it's not completely dry yet. So we're gonna let that dry. Um, I also, still not 100% dry, but it's close enough that I think we can work on creating the armature for our tree. So this is, this is gonna serve as my base. Again, I just wanted something that was gonna be a little solid on which I could build the rest of the tree. Um, I'm gonna keep my dome handy so I can double check height wise. This obviously is sticking up way higher than it needs to be and I'm gonna need to trim it off. And I'm okay having it stick up a little bit. As you can see, it's a little bit above the top. What I'm gonna do now is grab some uh, 18 gauge wire, because that's what I'm gonna use to create the limbs to this tree. And I'm gonna use the top of my bottle to wrap them around. Let me get some wire cutters. So I'm gonna cut off a length because it'll be easier to work with that way. And what I'm gonna do is wrap it around the top of the bottle. Just kind of tightening it around. And now I'm just gonna kind of bend it into a gnarly tree limb shape. And I'm gonna bend it back upon itself, make it a little thicker. Just kinda pinch it together with some needle nose pliers. And then go back out to be skinny limbs. I'm gonna, let's see. Let's first see if this is gonna fit within our dome. I'm just gonna kinda fiddle with this until I get it how I want. I know this probably doesn't look like much of anything. Let me pull this out so you can see. So I kind of just bent some wire around um, and I'm gonna do some more of this. Let's set that aside for now. And I know you're looking at this going, what on earth is she doing? It's, it, it's kind of a trust the process kind of thing because what we're doing is just creating a base structure on which to paper mache. So this does not have to look all that great because what we're gonna do is paper mache around it, which will help us create 
the look of branches um, once we get to that stage. So I'm just kind of creating crooked little branches and I think I'm gonna pull in some, this is 22 gauge. Now, if you're not familiar with wire, um, the higher the number, the skinnier the wire. So you'll notice this is skinnier than that. So we're gonna add some offshoot branches to our main lens using thinner wire. I'm just gonna kinda twist this around. it on and it's still not quite staying where I want so I'm gonna pull out the other thing we're gonna use for this tuck tape that I picked up at the dollar store because that's what we're gonna use to help keep things in place I'm gonna tear off a little piece of, or cut off a piece of duct tape. And I want my branches kind of going like that. And I'm just gonna add a little duct tape on here to make sure my little offshoot branches stay about where I want them until I manage to paper mache them. All right, so it's also going to add a little bulk, bulk to the wire. Um, and I'm going to do another skinny bit Oop. over on this side. I'm going to grab my wire needle nose pliers to turn, twist my wire around. Again, take some duct tape. And add that to hold these guys in place for now. All right, let's stick this back on and see how we're doing because I may need to adjust stuff. Now, once I start paper mache I can't adjust anymore. The paper mache will hold everything in that set place that it gets paper mache in. And I did not put the tape in a way that's actually holding those guys. So let's put our, see like this branch needs to come in and go like that maybe. Let's see. Oh, everybody's moving around on me. All right. I'm just kind of trying to get our branches a little closer in because my dome is not all that big. <laughs> so I got to work within my dome's space. All right, let's see if I can get some more duct tape on that and get that guy.
Okay, our branches are higher up than they, oh, you can't see. Okay, so my branches are like pushing against the top. So I need to bring them down more. So again, this is this is what my branches are looking like. I'm going to add one more. And it's going to go Can you see what I'm doing? All right. I'm sticking it through the loop and around the skewer in the middle. All right, so we're going to bend this back to create a thicker limb, like so. And I'm going to add some thinner branches on it. And do one at the very end. And I'm gonna add a little piece on the end of this so we can have like a forked branch over here. guys will work better towards getting you to bend where I want you to bend.
cooperate, which it is not wanting to do at all. Okay, we're gonna just start a little bit all over again because this is not working. Okay, let's get out our dome, see where everybody's at, because we're gonna add additional bulk to this once we start putting the paper mache on. So I wanna make sure if we're butting up against like the top or the sides, we're not doing so in a way that's gonna cause issues once we add the paper mache to it. All right, I want you to stay in place this way. You need to bend down more. You need to turn that way more. And you need to go down a little bit more, I think. Let's see. Right. Let's point you up a little bit more. You can go like that. You need to turn this way, which is, you're not going to like because of all the tape I already put on. duct tape on here and try and squish that in a little bit because it's getting a little thicker than I wanted it to. Right. So I'm just using the duct tape to kind of close in the duct tape that I had over there so it was not quite as bulky. Okay, let's see how we fit now. And I think if I squish them over just a pinch, that that might be good. Mm, that guy's still a little too long. So I think this is going to be the prime structure of our tree. Now, what I'm also going to grab is some scratch paper to kind of stuff in here and build up the center part of our tree a little bit more. And I'm going to put some duct tape around the neck of the bottle where I've got all of my wires attached to make sure I get them stuck in place so they're not gonna move anymore. Cause I think I just shifted them a little bit. Cause I think they need to go kind of like that. Let's see. Add that on there. And a little duct tape over here. And I don't care, I don't know if you can see that, that the duct tape's going on kind of lumpy bumpy. That's just going to add texture to our tree. Um, and it's going to end up being covered by paper mache anyway.
also gonna add a little bulk around where the top of the bottle is because that'll get the, the trunk a little bit more even. Don't know how well you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just wrapping another piece of paper around the top part of the bottle where the cap goes on to kind of smooth out the tree into something That guy keeps moving. All right. Duct taping paper on. That's where that's gonna sit. Uh-oh. My paper up here is a little too high. It's not going under, so we'll just bend that back, see if we can get this on now. Still too high. So I'm just gonna pop that off. Put a little piece of duct tape around it. So that's pretty much how it's gonna look in there once I get it more like tree-like. So let's do that. Add some more duct tape in places where I just wanna keep it put for when I put the paper mache on. All right, and there's one more thing I wanna do. And what I'm gonna do is paper mache this in place on here. Is I'm gonna take a couple strips of paper, roll it up to create some gnarled roots for the ground. And again, we're just gonna duct tape the heck out of this. So I've just taken a rolled up piece of paper and I'm wrapping a bit of duct tape around it because the duct tape's gonna help it keep shape when we start adding the paper mache on. Okay, this is definitely <laughs> very fiddly. Um, you, of course, could skip the tra tree. You could get a die cut out and do that as your tree. Um, you could also pick up a miniature tree at a craft store and use that instead of making your own. Um,
All right. So this bizarre um, creature is hopefully going to end up looking like a tree when I'm done with it. Um, I am going to cover this with paper mache. And I am going to do that off camera because it is a very messy process and I don't do it in my house. I will do it out on my screened in porch. And so really don't have a setup where I could film doing that. But I wanted to give you a couple tips um, regarding paper mache. Before I start, I have cut up. So I have pretty much a, a paper mache kit. And what I've got is, this is a bowl I picked up at the dollar store, which is where I will mix my glue mixture in. And then I have scrap papers that I have torn up into strips that I'll use for the paper mache. And your glue mixture should be approximately equal parts water and a white glue. Um, you're gonna want it not to be too loose. And so what I usually use, so I said it at the beginning, as I was looking for the cup that I'm gonna use to um, make my mixture, I found the tin foil roll that I was going to use. And I'm wondering, now, after all the work I put into creating this weird creature, I'm gonna use it. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much as I predicted, as soon as I finished doing that, I found it. So very annoying. All right, so I'm gonna use this cup for my measuring. That's about right glue-wise. And I'm gonna use a plastic knife to stir things up. And then I'm gonna add about the same amount of water. And then mix them up. Probably should have started with a little less water because this is definitely a little on the soupier side. So I'm going to add more glue. So that's about what I want. I want a soupy glue. Um, I'm gonna go outside now and do my paper mache -ing. And I'll come back and show you the end result. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do, just so you know, is take a strip, dip it in the glue, and wrap it around. So I pretty much just dip a strip in the glue. So I'll show you one piece before going outside because yeah, the problem is, is the glue gets very messy. And so I just make sure the strip's covered in the glue mixture and that there's not too much extra glue on. Shift this over, bring our tree around. And then what I'll just do is Back I wanted to tear, which is fine, because these pieces are a little long for what I'm working on. The last project I worked on was large uh, home decor mushrooms that I put out for a decorations for a tea party. And so I'm just gonna wrap the pieces with the paper mache and kind of smush them down.
So I'm gonna wrap everything in paper mache. Now for the skinnier branches, I don't wanna add too much bulk, so that's probably all that I want for that. So I'm just gonna tear that off and just keep wrapping. Oh, this may need to be thinned down a little because it's very, very sticky. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna slap paper mache on until the whole thing is covered. And I will come back when I'm done doing that. Okay, so our tree is all paper mache and dried. And so here's what he looks like. So he actually looks like a tree now. I know you were thinking I was insane um, when you were looking at the pill bottle with the wires and you were like, that's just what on earth. But now we've got a spooky tree to go in our graveyard scene. And I do think probably would have been better off if I had found the tube before so that I could have made it a little skinnier, but it's good. We're all set. Next step is I'm going to take ground espresso distress paint and paint the whole thing. So pretty much I'm just going to come in with a paintbrush. Actually, I'm going to probably just use my craft mat as a palette because uh, why not? All right, I'm going to grab a paintbrush and I'm just going to give the whole thing a coat of dark brown paint. Um, so I don't know <laughs> that you really need to watch me covering this entire thing with paint. Um, I think that'd be akin to watching paint dry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this sucker a good old coat of brown paint. And then I will come back and I will show you what we're going to do to give it a little bit more life and interest than just slapping on a coat of dark brown paint. Uh, so he's all covered in brown paint, although I see I may have missed a few spots that I'll have to go back and touch up. Um, what I'm going to do is actually add a little bit of black paint just to add a little bit of depth to the piece. And I'm going to do that with a relatively dry brush and just a little bit of paint and just kind of brush it on haphazardly, which might alleviate my need to touch up the other paint. Um, now, it took me about, and I don't know if I, I, I meant to say this when I first brought the piece back on camera, um, so it took about an hour to paper mache it, um, and actually it was broken up into two sessions. So I did a coat of paper mache over it. Um, ooh, sorry, I keep bumping the camera because my phone is plugged in and the cord is right, right here, like right where my, the tip of my paintbrush is pointing or the end of the paintbrush. Um, And so the first time around, I got it mostly covered, but there were some spots where by the time I was trying to go back and put a little bit more on, it was so sticky that I was pulling stuff off. Also, this was the first time I've used like wire armature with paper mache. And I discovered the paper mache did not like to stick to the wire. So I ended up going back in and covering all of the wire pieces with um, duct tape. And that helped a lot. So I know for future projects, cover everything with tape. And probably a masking tape would work even better because it ha would have even more grip to it than the duct tape. But the duct tape made it so that it would actually stick to um, the wire pieces. So I'm just going in, adding a little dark to give this some depth. Um, oh look, I missed. Oop. And I'm bumping the camera again. And I'm just using my finger to kind of smudge it around. Just 
just taking a look, see if there's anywhere that I think could use a little bit of darkening. that's good okay so what I think I'm gonna do now is to bring in some light to it and so I want to add a little bit more texture I'm gonna grab my grit paste crypt and I'm probably just gonna use my finger for this because it'll be easier and I'm just gonna smear some of this onto my tray in spots Oh, another thing I did while I was paper macheing is I rolled up some pieces of paper and like glued them on with the paper mache paste and then put a piece over top to smooth it out just to give the piece a little bit more texture. Now, if you don't have grit paste crypt, you can do um, and what I was originally thinking I was going, going to do, and then I was like, wait, I have the grip paste crypt, I should use that, um, is just add a little natural sand. Or if you don't have that, you can add sand to a little bit of gesso. Now, you're probably going to want to tint that a little bit before you add it if you're doing gesso with regular sand in it. Um, the natural sand will... Um, dry mostly translucent. So what I was gonna do was just add some natural sand and then go back with a little bit of gray paint to add some depth and highlights to our tree. So I'm just gonna keep smearing this around. And what I can always do is if it ends up being too much or if I don't like it, I can come in and paint over the crypt paste. So I think he's pretty much good for now. We're gonna leave him sit to dry completely and then we'll assess whether we need to do any more painting on him. So I'm gonna go clean up my messy fingers and I'll be back. All right, um, so I was testing the layout out a little bit. Um, our tree needs a little bit of touching up. There, there are a few spots that I noticed, which I can't see right now, um, that needed a little touch up paint. So we're gonna do some touch up on him and the grit paste in the spots where I put it on thick, it retained its color, like there's some color to it, but in the thinner spots, not so much. So I'm probably gonna also add a little bit of pumice stone um, just a little bit, just dry brushed on, just to add a little bit more depth of color to our tree. It has a thing, has a skewer sticking out of it, and so it really needs to be stuck in somewhere for it to stand. So we'll do that. So I'm just going to go in and find, there are a few spots where I noticed the Brown paint needed a little bit of touch up, which I'm going to try and find now. See, I've got a little bit of cracking going on. And now I'm just gonna do a little bit of pumice stone on there just because it's 
it's very dark on the piece, so I want to bring a little bit of lightness into our tree just so it'll pop a little bit more. So again, like I did with the black, I'm just kind of going in with like a dry brush, just adding a little bit of pumice stone. All right, so I think that's good for our tree. So this is what our gnarled little tree looks like. And I'm gonna stick him back onto the styrofoam base. So this is where we're gonna stop for today. And here's a sneak peek of what the project's gonna look like when it's all finished. I'm not exactly sure how many videos it's going to end up being because I haven't finished editing the footage from creating the project yet, um, but I will create a playlist for all of the videos for this project. And if you want to be sure not to miss the rest of this project and my future projects, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, please leave me a comment down below and a thumbs up as both really help with uh, growing my channel. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.